Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we are here on a bright Thursday morning today. Sun is shining brightly here, and I got some very important questions about transits recently. One of the questions is, uh, of course, I've made many videos on transits, but uh, still, I get yeah, I keep getting these queries. You know, my dasha is saying something, and my transit is saying something. What will happen when there's a clash between a dasha and a transit? What happens, right? Well, we could give a short answer. That is, whatever is in your dasha, that happens. But how does it, uh, how does it ultimately fructify in your life? For example, if uh, let's take two contradictory scenarios. If you have a planet who is sitting in the seventh house or the second house or the eleventh house, or they are lording these houses, and the dasha gets activated, and you are around 25 or more than that, then there's a chance that you might get married if you're not. But suppose you have Jupiter, Saturn, Sun, Moon, Mercury, all these planets, let's imagine, they are transiting in your sixth house, right? Now, what does it mean? Or maybe the other way around, uh, you have a planet who is sitting in the sixth house or the tenth house, which can uh, deny you marriage, but let's imagine this planet, uh, uh, although it's sitting there, uh, but in transit, this same planet or many planets in transit uh, is moving to your second house or seventh house or the tenth house or the eleventh house. So, how do you read this? Now, sixth house is anti marriage, but seventh house, second house, eleventh house, these are pro marriage, right? So how do you how do you decide what will actually happen? That's exactly what we are going to discuss today. Because many times you will see people, uh, they will get dashas of sixth house or tenth house, and then they will argue with astrologers. Oh, sir, but my transit is happening. Uh, my Jupiter is transiting in second house. So why did I not get married? Your astrology is fake. It doesn't work. No, it always worked. You didn't know how to use it, right? So. Therefore, if you're new to the channel, then uh, please subscribe to it down below. And if you want a consultation from me, you can always go down uh, to the web page. Uh, you will find it down in the description section. And yes, God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and uh, you will find him, irrespective of where are your planets transiting. Now, in Vedic astrology, we follow three simple steps. Very, very, very simple. It's not easy, but it's simple. <laughs> What's the first step? The first step is you analyze the overall chart. Okay. So that's the first step. Nothing can replace the power of that step. Which means if you if you jump without following these steps, then you are most likely to make a blunder. So do not do a blunder. Um, do not uh, reverse these steps. Okay. So first step is you see what the horoscope is telling, which means what are majority of the planets indicating, which means you see you have sun, you have moon, you have the Lord of the Ascendant, these three planets, what are they indicating, right? These three are very crucial planets. They decide where will be the flow of the chart. Other planets can add to this or obstruct this. So for example, if you have sun, moon and ascendant Lord, somehow linked with the second house or seventh house or eleventh house, then you are pro-marriage, right? Uh, unless the nakshatra lords of these three are sitting in sixth house or tenth house, unless. But in general, you are pro-marriage. You, you think that, yeah, uh, I want to get married or maybe I need to get married or maybe I will continue my marriage, right? Um, but suppose you have a planet like Jupiter or Saturn or Venus sitting in 10th house or in the 6th house, right? So then during that time, there might be some pressure due to your work and you may not be able to give time to your spouse. Uh, but if prominent planets are sitting in the 6th house or 10th house, then you may not want to get married. You may feel that, oh, marriage is not required. Maybe I am better off uh, single. And then if you have planets like Venus, Jupiter, Saturn, Mars, Rahu, Ketu, if they are you know, in 2nd house, 7th house, 11th house, unless a lot of planets are there in these three houses, then um, uh, you, you, you will still uh, not feel that it's worthy to get married or if, if I should get married. Okay, 
But yeah, that's if 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 as I said, if Venus, Jupiter, Saturn, they are in seven, you might feel uh, that yeah, maybe I can think of marriage. But because your prominent planets like ascendant Lord, Sun, Moon, they are in houses which are negating marriage, so you will not actually want to get married internally. Okay, depending on other combinations in the chart, of course, conditions apply. So now you see uh, once you see these three planets. Sun, Moon, and Lord of the Ascent. Then you check the Karaka for that particular event. So, when it comes to marriage, you need to check Venus, right? Venus for men and Jupiter for ladies. So once you see that, then you will know what's the overall disposition, and you have to check uh, what are the houses which are related to that particular event. What are they telling you from the horoscope? So. If you talk of marriage, what is the second house telling? What is the seventh house telling? What is the eleventh house telling? Okay, where which planets are placed in these houses? Are the lords of Dusthanas placed in these houses? Then getting marriage can be delayed. Or where are the lords of these houses placed? Are they placed in Dusthanas? Then also the marriage can be delayed. Now you know the the prominent planets, then the Karaka, Jupiter, Venus, and the the lords of these houses, right? All the planets in these houses. So, and then you see the trinal lords, the fifth lord, ninth lord. What are they saying, right? Because they help in marriage. So then you know what is the overall um, strength of this chart for getting married or for having a decent, good married life. You know that you are aware of it. Okay, this person doesn't uh, have a strong chart when it comes to marriage, or uh, it's reasonably good, or maybe it's not very good, or maybe it's excellent, right? So once you are aware of all this, then you know that the dashas will either reduce this or uh, amplify this. But overall, if the chart is strong, then the person is most likely to get married and is most likely to continue within the married life. But now, suppose you have uh, anti combination, then what happens is uh, the person may not marry, and then even if a dasha comes. Then the person will want to get married for that particular period of time, but then a person will uh, not get married finally. Okay, so now you know the overall strength of the chart, right? Then you go to the dashas. Second step. That was the first step. Second step is you go to dashas, and then you see uh, what's exactly going on, right? Which, uh, which, and whenever you talk of dashas. You shouldn't just ask, "Oh, I have Venus dasha. How will this dasha be? Right? Will it be good or bad? Right? Because these are see Venus is why only Venus? Even the shortest dasha, Sun Mahadasha, is also of six years. Right? You can't just ask, "Oh, will this dasha be good? Will this dasha be bad? All right? So uh, the thing is, uh, you have to be very specific. You have to ask, "How will this dasha be for my married life? How will this dasha be for my career?" Always be event centric when you are talking of astrology. Don't be planet centric. Don't ask, "Oh, sun is here. What will happen? This will happen. That will happen." No. Simple question. Sun Mahadasha started. Sun is here. This planet is here. That planet is there. All these things are there. How will be my married life? Because even if you, because sometimes people ask, "Oh, can I get a consultation based on my Saturn? Can you explain how my Saturn is?" Well, we could do that. But the problem is. You may not understand why that is happening because when you say I understand and I don't, you are experiencing a culmination of all the nine planets, right? So unless you are very evolved and you have done a lot of sadhana and all this, so um, it's very difficult to actually, you know, uh, claim that you know, oh yeah, 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 I have understood and uh, I know how exactly my Saturn is progressing, right? Because what you think is saturn so suppose many times people say oh my saturn is bad you know it's giving me suffering all the time but what could actually be the case is that uh, from last 20 years you are running mahadasha of planets which are placed in those sthanas and that has nothing to do with how your saturn is but how your mind will justify oh my saturn is in debility so my life is ruined you know my life is hellish right but that's not the reason so therefore uh, once you know from the overall chart, then you go to dashas and then you see what is exactly going to happen, right? Will the dasha, the dasha does not change the person, it changes the focus, right? People say, oh, dasha comes in this person change. No, he doesn't change. The person 
starts focusing on one particular area of life, right? So what that focus is, is the person focusing on marriage, career, health, or whatever it is, right? So that is something which you have to figure out from the dashas. Now, when you know that this is the strength of the chart and this is the strength of the dashas. So for example, let's take an ideal case scenario uh, where a person has a very good chart for marriage and a dasha is also very positive. Imagine the dasha of the seventh lot is running and the person is above 25. Then you say, oh yeah, this person can now get married. But now if transits are contradictory, then you go to stage three, then you analyze transits. The dasha will tell you what the event will be, right? But transits will tell you how the event will manifest. Okay. So for example, if when you are running the dasha of seventh lord and suppose your marriage is finalized, you get married. But imagine during that time, somehow you were running a lot of planets. Uh, you were running the transit of a lot of planets in your sixth house, right? Sun, Mercury, Venus, all these are stacked act on your sixth house well then what happens then it could mean that the time uh, during the time of your wedding it could be filled with a lot of anxieties you know? or it could be filled with problems like you are not able to book a reception hall or you know you are not able to find some some pandit or pujari or you know there could be some problems some setback some disappointment but the marriage will ultimately happen. The wedding has to happen because Dasha is promising. The, the transits cannot override. Okay, But imagine the person's horoscope is not very strong for marriage. But then the Dasha is somehow indicating marriage. So which means temporarily the person might think of marriage, but he or she may not want to get married internally. And then there is a bad transit. Right, then the chances of uh, the marriage not fructifying or the wedding not happening is quite high because the overall chart is indicating that, oh, just find some excuses not to get married. Okay, but even then, if a chart is decent, strong for marriage and a dasha is positive, even then, if the transits are negative, it cannot stop you from getting uh, you married. Okay, it cannot stop it. But it's just that you might find excuses. Oh, yeah, yeah, anyways, this person is not good. You know, that family is not good. Or maybe anyways, I didn't want to get married. Let's cancel it off. But if your dasha is positive for marriage, uh, the wedding will happen. Okay. Same is with career. Imagine you are running dasha for 10th house or 11th house. And then your 8th house uh, has too many planets in transit, right? So then what can happen is the promotion will be there. You will get a new job or, you know, you will get a big salary increment or you will expand your business uh, but the thing is uh, it might happen very suddenly all right so the transits can speak of the nature of the event so there could be contradictory things but ultimately what is then your dasha happens and the transits can give uh, give you a flavor of how that is turning out at the end of your life okay uh, so do not think that if you are running the dasha of the second, seventh house and your sun, mercury, venus is transiting the sixth, your marriage will be called off. Because many times I say, the, okay, this dasha is promising marriage, but then the person, uh, the client asks me, the, but sir, at that time, you know, my sun, mercury, venus, you know, you know, sir, you know this, you know that, you know, you know, you know, all the you knows keep coming, right? Because most of the people uh, who come to astrologers through YouTube, they have seen, you know, sun in first house videos, you know, moon in first house, Mars in first house. And then they think, oh, or, or they have seen, you know, transit videos, especially those who come from the Western astrology. Because uh, in Western uh, tropical astrology, there is hardly any concept of dashas, right? So they think transits are all in all. So then uh, it becomes a very tricky situation where you have to kind of explain the person and the person is very rigid and reluctant because... He or she has been seeing YouTube videos from last 10 years on, you know, transits or individual planetary placements, which doesn't work at the end of the day, right? Because everybody has a different chart and every flow is different, okay? So once you know all this, then you see, all right, these are what the transits are saying. And that is how the promise of the dasha will fructify, okay? And if you have things which are similar, like a planet is in seventh, whose dasha is started, you are 25 plus, and Sun, Mercury, Venus, Jupiter, Saturn, these are transiting in houses which 
for my marriage then the event will happen very easily very seamlessly very beautifully okay same is with career promotions okay so that will be all from my side do not uh, think that dashas and transits are contradictory and don't uh, don't think that they are you know trying to cancel out each other they are perfectly working in uh, harmony they complement each other they don't contradict each other all right thank you very much if you want to watch other videos on dashas or transits i'll put it there and if you are new to the channel then please subscribe to it down below if you like this video click the thumbs up and share it with somebody who is not aware of what to do when dashas and transits are contradictory all right god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him irrespective of how good or bad your dasha or transit is thank you